In honor of Pride Month, we'll be highlighting the Quest Center for Integrative Health, a wellness organization that was originally founded to serve people living with HIV AIDS. Over time, they've expanded their services and remain dedicated to providing a space in which anyone can express themselves along the spectrum of gender and sexuality. We'll be talking about Quest's new program specifically for the transgender and non-binary community, as well as their upcoming participation in Portland's virtual Pride Parade. With us today, we have Justine DaCosta, HIV Services Program Coordinator, and Richard Weinstein, HIV Services Peer Support Specialist. It's great to have you here with us today. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for joining us. So I wanted to find out a little bit about a new program that you have going on called, uh, I believe it's the Gender Flux Clubhouse. Is that yes. right? Yes, very excited about it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, tell me, tell me about that. What, <laughs> uh, what prompted it and what is it all about? So um, it started a few weeks ago. Um, myself and Gracie started it because we felt there wasn't a service uh, available to transgender identifying people, non-binary. So we wanted to create a safe space where people that identify that way to gather and support each other through their transition or through their experience in a similar space of people that identify the same way. Is there an actual clubhouse or it's <laughs> a really good question monica there's not a clubhouse it's more of an idea but um it is a safe space that people can join and just share their experience strength and hope yeah a safe space is kind of uh, what it's all about isn't it yeah, you, especially you can't express now. yourself about that yeah you yeah. can't exactly yeah. yeah and i'm just finding that there really needs to be this area for people to come and gather so it started how, how is it going so far so we've had some good members come. Um, I would say it's in its very early stage. We've had some consistent membership, but we are looking to expand and reaching out to the community to have more people join. Good, good. Yeah. Well, hopefully they can see this and know that they can join. Now, if they want to join the clubhouse uh, mm -hmm. and be a member, do they need to be uh, working already with Quest? <laughs> That's a really good question also, Monica. Um, right now it is for Quest members only, but we are looking to expand to non-Quest members. And uh, I'm looking for a way to somehow get out that information to people that are not Quest involved already. So I'm not okay. sure exactly how to do that yet, but we are looking to expand. Yeah. You let us know when that happens. Maybe we yeah. can help with that. So uh, this, this supports, uh, you said that um, non-binary and trans community, mm -hmm. are you, um, is there a specific programming that goes with that or is it just the people are there to, to talk and just, to, um, you know, mm -hmm. get, get information out or to share their experiences? Yeah, no, it's just to share their experience. There's no therapeutic model. We're not okay. trying to change anything <laughs> or provide any sort of mental health um, leaning towards it, but we're just trying to have a space for people that do identify this way to share their experiences and share, you know, a place where I don't feel like there, it exists already. So um, yeah. it's, I felt it was really important for a place for people that are usually marginalized or overlooked to yeah. have a space for their voices to be heard. A non-judgmental space. Is and no, that's a very really yeah. putting, yeah. yes, very really. much, it's a, Thank it's you a big for saying deal. that. Yeah, yeah well. it is a big deal. Yeah, it is. It is. So what is your role in the clubhouse then? So I'm one of the co-facilitators. Gracie and myself um, do that together. Um, I myself am not non-binary or transgender. I'm a gay man, mm -hmm. but um, I've been in the field for over 15 years. I started a place in New York and I came to um, Portland, Oregon about a year and a half ago. And I found that I, there wasn't this um, area or space to be had. So I wanted to provide that. Great. That's great. I'm sure that there are a lot of people who are appreciating that. Um, Justine, maybe you, can you tell me a little bit about um, the recovery house? Are you familiar with that? I mean, you're, is that something you work with? The recovery home um, is a sober living environment. It's a safe space. Um, it is a place for community. Um, it's part of our FSR program, which is Finding and Sustaining Recovery. Mm -hmm. And that's an integrative behavioral health treatment program at Quest that includes um, yoga, acupuncture, nutrition, it brings all of these things together. Quest partnered with Bridges to Change to create the recovery house um, where people can live in this safe space, sober environment, they're supported. Um, and everyone is also a member of um, FSR, the Finding okay. and Dating recovery program. Good, good. It, it seems, well, obviously in the name, integrative is part of the name of your organization, but it seems like uh, 
the, the holistic approach really seems to work. And then also that community plays a huge part in all of the services you provide. Would you agree with that? Community is the core of Quest. And then that's really how it was founded. Um, we had, you know, for many, many years from its inception in the 80s, there was nutrition night um, where the community would come together and, and make a meal and eat together. Um, and we're waiting to do that again, you know, after this pandemic passes through. Um, but even now we realize, you know, how important, even you know, more than ever right now, community is everything. Um, and yeah, the recovery home is just an extension of that. So have people still been there since COVID? I mean, have you been able to continue that? Absolutely. Okay. We, I believe we're full and, and, and have been. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a space that is, um, it's for our LGBTQ uh, plus um, identifying folks. Um, with particular, um, we, we really, you know, are supportive of, well, of everybody that is there, but also um, HIV positive folks. Um, there are um, a couple of, uh, Ryan, there's some Ryan White funding um, that goes into a portion of the home. Good, good deal. Uh, so tell me a little bit more uh, about the HIV services. Both of you can probably uh, give me information on that because that was how you originally started was supporting people with HIV or AIDS and, um, and it's still a, a core component of your organization, right? Right, that, that was how Quest started was supporting HIV positive folks um, during the beginning of the AIDS crisis. And it's, it's grown from there into a, a full integrative health care um, system and uh, our in HIV services in our program um, we ha have peer support so we have peer support specialists that work um, with with clients um, we also have groups we have uh, a men's group uh, that meets on Fridays and we also have the women of wisdom group which is a group for female identified um, individuals who are HIV positive Right. And I run the men's group. By the I was way. going to say, Richard, I bet you run the men's group. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. What, what, what have you found is one of the most important things that you can offer uh, people in that situation? What, what of, of all the things that the components of this integrative health, what, what is something that really stands out that helps that community? Uh, connection. Um, connection. A place for people to again, meet um, people that have shared experience, um, especially during the pandemic. The biggest thing is isolation. Um, this is the one place that they look forward to every Friday where they can be with other people outside of their little isolated bubble. So it's been so powerful and important for them. Yeah. And, yeah. and for me, for being part of that. I mean, it's been really fabulous and I'm so happy that we provide this service. Yeah, uh, I I'm, I love that you provide all the services. Mm -hmm. I met I met one of uh, one of your members uh, about a year ago, and it was in the pan during the pandemic, and she just had nothing but good things to say about the support that she felt. You know, coming, she had come from out of town, and, and it was a uh, you know it was kind of moving mm -hmm. actually. Um, so, you know, this sounds like the the support the um, connection is is really important. How how is all this funded? Because I believe a good portion of your uh, membership are low income or marginalized mm -hmm. communities. Is that right? Right. So more than 70% of our clients um, are considered low income, um, underinsured or uninsured. So we do um, re rely on donations and you can donate on our website. Uh, we also have a uh, annual fundraiser, which is uh, always a blast. Um, it was virtual yeah. this year but still it's so great for the community to come together and celebrate Quest. Yeah, right. So that's something hopefully this next year you can do it in person perhaps, um, but, but people can go ahead and donate. So this is something near and dear to someone's heart or something they feel is really important then, then go to the website and check it out. They can donate there. Good. Absolutely. I do know that you have been involved in, in the Pride Parade for the last, I don't know how many years. Are you going, you're going to do that again this year? Because this uh, next month, or this is going to be Pride Month. Yeah, June. Pride Month. Yeah. 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 So, will are. you be involved again? We will. So, it'll be virtual this year, um, and it will be on Pride Northwest YouTube channel. It will be streamed on June twentieth. Okay. Um, good. We will be doing some some filming prior to that, and then it'll be streamed then. Wonderful. Oh, good. Well, we can look forward to that. I'll make sure we get that information on our on our screen as well. Since June is Pride Month, maybe you can talk a little bit about the the importance of supporting the LGBTQ plus uh, community. You know, this community is one that is 
more likely to be affected by issues such as substance use. That's why the recovery home, for example, um, is there to support this community particularly. Um, Richard, would you like to say anything about, about how? No, I mean, like um, we know that in the LGBT community, there is a higher incidence of addiction and that the services that we provide can be catered more for that because there could be more of a need in that area. So that's why the house is open to more people, but it is geared towards the LGBT community because there's more of a need. It's a lot about safety, isn't it? Their, mm -hmm. their, their feelings of safety and their actual physical safety too. I yeah, and being seen and recognized that, you know, you do have more of an obstacle and we're here to support that. Right. right. So, and create any, that community. Right. Yeah. Right. Any extra help you can get to get by in this mm -hmm. life, especially now, is appreciated, I'm sure. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Is there anything else that you want to tell us about, about um, your clubhouse or your, uh, your services and the kinds of things that you provide to the community that you want to share with us today? I mean, I would say, I love how Justine, you said that, you know, community is a heart of Quest. And I would say that Quest just has a really big heart and that we provide services for all people that are in need. And I think that if people need naturopathic health, acupuncture, mental health services, HIV services, drug addiction services, we are there for the community. So that's a lot yeah. of services in it. <laughs> and, uh, and I get the feeling that it feels like a real a family affair. It really does. It yeah. really does. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Justine and Richard, so much for sharing your information with us today. And I hope that uh, your virtual parade is fun and that people will donate generously. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you so, you much, so Monica. much, Monica. You're welcome. Day. Thank Bye. you. Bye. And, and thanks to our viewers today. Thanks for joining us um, from all of us at Metro East. Stay safe, stay healthy. <laughs>